You're in Tukwila? We are in Tukwila. Okay. <clears throat> All right, the day is... <laughs> Take three. Got it. All right, the day is finally here. We are at Rainier Outdoor in Tukwila, Washington to pick up our yurt, and really, I cannot be more excited. Um, before we load the crates, drive off into the sunset in our truck, um, we're gonna meet some of the people that have built our yurt and build the yurts that come out of this amazing facility. Uh, let's go meet them now. Hey, Dana. Hey, Dad. <laughs> you just uh, oh, yeah. taking a little nap? Yeah. Having some coffee inside yeah. there? I am. Come on in. Awesome. This is our 30-foot eagle yurt. It's a little, it's nice and spacious. Yeah. How's the light in here? Should we do it outside? I guess I should make a formal introduction. This is Dana. Nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. I go by the yurt girl. The yurt girl. It that's must your, be true. It's that's on, on my, your business card. It's on my license plate, dude. <laughs> really? What's your, your role here at Rainier uh, Outdoors? I am design and sales consultant. Okay. So sort of the face to people that are new to yurts, yeah. don't know what they're doing. Uh, you were the first person that I reached out to and you got back like that. And we've been in touch ever since, answering every question that I had, sending all the documents, all the photos. We're standing in front of the 30-foot yurt, yep. essentially the same size that exactly. uh, I'll be building in a couple days. Before we, we load all that stuff up, Let's maybe we can take a, take a little peek inside. Absolutely. Maybe get my hands a little dirty. Absolutely. Let's go. All right, cool. Perfect yeah. timing. I'm Zach. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. You built the deck already, I heard? Yeah. How'd that yeah. Go? Uh, it went pretty, pretty well. It was a little longer than expected. But, um, I mean, relatively easy. Um, that did not go well. <laughs> cool. Well, should we, uh, Let's do a should we take a look? Yeah. Take care. Welcome to Rainier Outdoor. To right. our facility here in Tukwila, Washington. Ow. It's, it's massive. Bigger, it's bigger than you thought. It's way bigger than I thought. So we got our start making tents for the Alaska Gold Rush. Okay. So this was sort of the last stop, Seattle, yeah. before people would head up north to the Yukon. Oh, wow. So and then they just kind of... It evolved from there. We still make that same tent as much. Really? Yeah. These are our cutting edge machines. Yeah. And so what we're doing is we're rolling out the vinyl fabric or the window film or the roof material. Okay. Or the insulation. They uh, scan the job and then the machinery automatically cuts to customize what your yurt is like. Right. How many windows, where the windows are. No measuring, yeah. no paper pattern, no scissors. We're looking for precision. Here's some insulation. This is insulation for a roof. So this is a single layer here. And when you order double layer, you're gonna get two layers. Okay, and then once you get to the job site, you put it all together. You tape it some together. Tape. Mm -hmm. right. So for the roof, we ship it and you install it as independent layers. Okay. So you've got your liner first, right. and then your single layer, and then your double layer, yeah. and then your outer roof. Okay. And the reason we do that is because it's really heavy and it's kind of cumbersome. Oh yeah, I can imagine. And that's easier for you to install that way. This is a sidewall. So on the sidewall, we actually sew the liner to the foil. You're gonna hang it as these pieces, and they overlap a little bit, and it just makes it easier to install. This is a functioning plant, so we got lots going on. We got some roof material here. Uh, the standard roof material that we're gonna use on an, an Eagle Yard is gonna be a 19 ounce thickness. An upgrade to that would be a 28 ounce. Mm -hmm. It's got a 15 year warranty. And the reason we do that is for people that are in high UV, um, okay. extreme heat, high altitude. Right. So anytime, you know, Peru, Panama. Yeah, that sun can yeah. really kind of make that Material but fragile over here in the Pacific time. Northwest. This usually can fly. It's a when you don't see the year. sun at all. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> There's more people involved in this process than I kind of imagined. This is our radio frequency welder, and what we're doing is we're taking two layers of vinyl, overlapping them by about an inch, okay. and then using radio frequency waves. Think microwaves, right. but radio waves, and we're creating a molecular agitation that's happening right now and then they do a cooling process and it, it creates a weld. It melts the two pieces together, they become one. So the reason we do that is we don't want stitching, especially on the roof. Right. Little hole that's water gonna fill with water. Through, right. 
gonna rot the stitches eventually. Yeah. So on the outer skins, we always wanna use this radio frequency weld. Let's go check out this rough. Oh wow, you, got, you have it on a, a little hoist. It's yes. That's because a person gets underneath it and sews the bottom oh. hem. I don't think there's anybody in here right now. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, you have people think... hiding out, having lunch <laughs> yeah. maybe. What she's doing is she's turning the bottom hem and she's sewing it with a cord inside. And we'll visit that cord a little that's, later. That's the one that yep. you pull underneath yep. to, to kind of cinch it all down? Yep. And this thread that she's using is called Chinura. Okay. Chinura. And it's like a Gore-Tex jacket. Okay. Okay. It's the same price per pound as gold. This really? is very expensive thread. All right. And so we're using that because it does really well. I have really to well. check my pockets before <laughs> I head up. Uh, it does really well in high UV extreme weather. Okay. So that's why we're using it. This is one of the few um, processes on this whole thing that's going to be sewn. Yeah. But it's a better way to do it. You can't heat seal this sure. with that rope in there. But here is one of the heat seal welds. You can see it here. It, it sounds like uh, quite the process. How, how long does it take you to do the whole thing? Two hours? Right. Yes. Depends wow. on the size of the yurt sure. and the rest. But... Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're approaching the wood shop. Hello, Hello. Sarah. Hello. Welcome in. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Got some good old. Yeah, mine are special. How's it look? Oh, yeah. Yeah? So, right up front here, we have two or twin CNC routers. Again, yep. we're looking for perfection. When we're cutting wood, we want to make sure that we've got it right. So they basically can just scan a job or put it in the coordinates, does all the work for us. I just love the, you can smell it. You can smell the wood it in here. so good. This is a header for the door. It's a glue lamb process. You can see the different pieces of wood just in the rosy color versus the, the plain color. And yep. we are going to have you stain this. Really? We use a natural penafin. Yeah. Verde oil. It's a Brazilian rosewood oil. Okay. It's non harmful to the environment. Yeah, I might have to suit up for this. <laughs> yeah. Basic staining 101. Oh, yeah. You dip a rag, you put it on, you wipe it off. Let me get that in there. Most of the wood is stained, just the natural color, yes. because it's, this is dug fur? It's dug fur. Okay. Yep. Yeah. All of the wood that comes in here for the yurts is dug fir. It's sustainably grown. It's mm -hmm. northern forest grown, which means it grows a little bit slower. It doesn't, the sun doesn't shine out very much here yeah. in Washington. Right. And that's actually a good thing because as it grows slower, mm -hmm. it's going to have fewer knot holes and it's going to be stronger. Oh, interesting. So that makes sense. northern grown is, is a preferred yeah. of engineers and architects. So it's relatively locally sourced. Yes, exactly. Yeah. How are you doing? So this good. is Chris. I'm Zach. Nice to meet you. Uh, Chris runs the Yurt uh, Outdoor Wood Shop. Each of these holes, that's uh, where all the rafters go. Yes, these are all rafter pin holes. Yeah. And we drill them. It's all jigged out too. We have a template that will tell us what size ring we're building. Okay. And we, we do build three sizes. So this is our small. We have our medium. This is this is the small. This is the small. <laughs> that's the medium, and then you will see, soon see the uh, the large one. Okay. Wow. Yeah, Rainier is the only company that has a perfectly circular ring. And so when you walk into one, it's, it's probably the, the main different, yeah. differentiating uh, visual exactly. piece that you can I have people call tell. me and they're like, oh, I'm buying a used Rainier. It's on Craigslist. I'm like, okay, can you send me a picture of it? I'm like, no, that's not a Rainier. Yeah, that's not you a can Rainier tell outdoor product. Yeah. yeah, I can tell just by looking at the ring. This thing is engineered to withstand 7,000 pounds. Wow. So the hurricanes that went through Florida earlier I had a guy in, right in Panama City, and he has a yurt, and he opened the door the next morning, and he was the only thing standing. Really? Every single house in his neighborhood was gone. Airflow just goes shh right yeah. around it. I mean, it's, it's a round structure. Yep. There's, there, there's a benefit to the, some of it. Definitely. Okay, so here's your Flintstone mallet. I like it. What did you call this? I called it a Thor. Thor. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So the way we do is we just put a little glue at a time. We just Roll it around, get nice and glued up in the middle. Yeah. And then at times, sometimes you would need the the door, but you right. get it all the way down, and pretty much that's all it is. And then what I do is spin it going. Oh, oh my God, a little tight. And then that's Chris when you need the hammer. Easy. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna use the hammer. <laughs> Watch out for the glue all splatter. The all the way down. There we go. These two? Okay. Oh, you're a pro. You've already done this before. 
I'm trying to beat you. <laughs> so the reason for the dowels is just to hold it all together. For example, in that hurricane, you know, the force could have pulled those apart, yeah. not with the dowels. All right, I'm going to do one more. And I'm going to get this one without the hammer. <laughs> no! All right. You 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 pre-drilled these, didn't you? Huh? I set it up. Uh huh. I knew it. This was a rig game from the beginning. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna start up the lattice machine. If someone's totally new to yurts, okay. In general, you know there there are kind of a lot of a couple of different components that make up a yurt. Right. The ring being one. The rafters being another, and then the lattice that goes all the way around. The lattice what, is really important. Can you explain why it's so important? Sure. Let's go back to yurts 101. So yurts started in Mongolia 2,000 okay. years ago, and they were a nomadic uh, civilization, and so they would travel across Asia mm -hmm. uh, following their yak herd. That's for true. Yeah. And so um, they needed a structure they could set up, stay there a couple months, take it down, follow the herd. Right. So the lattice actually works like a baby gate. And it's the walls. Okay. And so you stretch it all the way around in the circle, and then at the top of that lattice, at the top of that X, is a cable that stretches. And then the rafters sit on that cable. Right. And they create perfect balance, tension, and compression. So picture my elbows pushing down and out. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then that compression is going down to the yes. floor. Yes. And you've got perfect tension up at the ring. Sure. So balance, tension, compression. It's, it's kind like of perfect the perfect mathematical the strength of the whole thing. Yeah. Right. which is why people want to put in like six French doors. Well, the lattice has to do its job, so right. we limit that. Well, let's go ahead and start this puppy up. And the lattice machine is we have six drill bits that are precision placed, yeah. and we have a saw bit at each end at a 30 degree angle, and we're gonna do the whole stack at once. So oh. six drill bits, two saws. They'll be doing this for hours and hours for a 30 foot yurt. Really? Because remember, the lattice goes this way and this way. Yeah, and this is like a pretty, I mean, this is a pretty easy rig that's doing the work for you. If you were to have to drill that by hand or... And more importantly, precision. Right. What about the, the, the width of this? Is this something that you want super thick or thin? You or? want it thicker. Right. Which is why our yurt weighs about 1,000 pounds more than the competition. Our lattice is actually a quarter of an inch thicker. Wow. Do you want to do one? Yeah, I'll do one. I bet. Good. It's not as pretty as yours, <laughs> but it, it'll work. Yeah. I'm gonna do it a little more. All right. I feel pr I feel happy about that. <laughs> This is a... Uh, it's pretty industrial. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Welcome to the Rainier Outdoor Metal Shop. This is our flow jet machine, and what we're doing is we're cutting metal pieces up to three inches thick with water. It's using water coming out of like a turkey baster yeah. at 97,000 PSI. It's not something you want to slip your finger under. No, exactly. <laughs> These are the door tangs, mm -hmm. and this is what gets embedded in the door frame. And the lattice goes in. Yes. Right. And then also the ring to rafter brackets, which hold the rafter up the ring. So these are all custom made here. Yes. They're not ordered from somewhere else. They're cut on this machine, and then we have an in-house powder coating division. Uh -huh. And so they go from here right over there. They get baked hmm. about 800 degrees, and then the next day they're ready to go. Wow. All right. This is uh, the final, final step, right? Yes, it is. Get the good old Rainier Outdoor tag on it. This is probably the only thing I would trust myself doing in this factory. <laughs> Let's see you screw this up. <laughs> yeah, I could also screw this up too. Very nice technique. Uh, yeah, you got it. Am I wasting all your paint? There we no, go. You're good. All right. Awesome. Let's see how I did. Straight up. Uh huh. All right. You're hired. <laughs> All right. What's the hourly rate here for the uh, for spray paint artist? <laughs> that was amazing to see how it's all being made and constructed inside Rainier Outdoor. Uh, everything's in crates, ready to go. It's got my name right on the box, and we're gonna load it in our truck. Let's go. All right. So Chris is over here 
These are these are my guys. These are your crates. Woo! Yeah. A little bigger, a little name? bigger than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you brought the right size truck. Yeah, I, I think so. After a little bit of effort, the crates are in, they fit, and we are ready to go back down to Oregon, build our yurt. Let's do this.